Hi, I'm Kenneth Greiner, and it is the 17th of August, 2024. I grew up in a little town called Buckley, Washington, in the United States. From our kitchen window, you could see the snowy capped peaks of Mount Rainier. So it was a really beautiful place to be a kid. I was raised Mormon, so for me, being the youngest child, the only boy that would later realize was gay and a budding artist all at the same time, that was pretty isolating. I mean, overall, it was a conservative area that I was in. So when I was younger, it felt like there were a lot of obstacles in place that were preventing me from accepting who I really was. And I've had to work through all of that, you know, one thing at a time. Back then, I didn't know that I had ADHD, but I've always really felt sensitive to my environment. And being in the church as I was, it kind of left me with a lot of issues around my identity. I felt that it was spiritually oppressive and limiting at home, my parents, um, you know, they always seemed to be fighting. Like, they weren't very happy. That's obviously distressing for a child. And there wasn't a lot of harmony as a result. So they divorced when I was a teenager. And somewhere along the way, I kind of just walled myself off from everything and became really independent and future obsessed, avoidant probably, you know? So art was like one of my earliest forms of therapy and a way for me to distract myself. I've always been a natural dreamer and, you know, in response to my childhood, I think that made me a bit utopian to be honest. I've always been really interested in the why of it all. I get the sense that I would have been that way anyway. But, you know, with a lot of things happening around me that were challenging me at a young age, I just felt like I needed to find answers. Because it always seemed pretty clear to me that things could be different. People could be better to each other in the world, and yet they weren't and we all suffer for it. Now, I think as an adult, I feel like one of art's main functions is to help and heal and allow us to reflect, you know, to see ourselves truly. As I've tried to unpack, you know, my own past, I've used it that way a lot in my life and so I think of it as a tool for expansion. Because of what I think I knew growing up, I for a long time associated rural places with dysfunction, you know? Like I wanted to get away from them and into the city where I thought things would be different, but now I'm trying to reclaim the idea of wild spaces being supportive, compassionate, and progressive, maybe. I think it makes a lot of sense that I tend to focus on themes of meditation and healing and balance a lot. Because being an American, I always felt at odds with my origins in a country with 
a really recent legacy of colonialism. You know, I was privileged in that space um, in many ways, but I still felt displaced. I think that kept me from really feeling a sense of belonging, you know, because if you're willing to look, you can see a lot of wounding and scarring in the culture as a result of that history. And I think we're living in a time where we're seeing these problems really come to the surface in a big way, like rearing their heads and causing a lot of unease. There's so much inequality and power struggle in the world. But at the same time, like life is so mysterious and deeply beautiful and it's like we live in this incredible contradiction. For me, I think being an artist is my way of trying to help soothe that and reflect that back to culture in my small way. But maybe stylistically, I think I learned a lot from looking at the works of the American land artists, Robert Smithson, people like the minimalists in New York that were there in the 60s and 70s, like maybe more recently, Li Ufan and Manoha artists of Japan and of that same time period. I, I think I was drawn to these things really at first from an aesthetic point of view, very intuitively, but as I look at them more deeply, I think it's because they all seem to be distillers of essence and cultivators of environment, you know, composers, really. It feels like what they do is more energetic rather than being highly conceptual, even though a lot of them were pretty philosophical people. You know, some of them wrote essays and manifestos and at the same time, like the work doesn't actually require that much from the viewer other than presence. So I value that a lot because I think art struggles to be connective if it requires like a lengthy lexicon of references or these highly confusing press releases, you know, I think all of that stuff has a tendency to alienate people. At the moment, um, I'm studying in London at the Royal College of Art. I started last year and now I'm beginning an MA um, this next month. But even though I've changed, I feel like I'm still really interested in spirituality and understanding environments. A couple of, well, a few areas occupying a lot of my mental space right now are like folk belief systems, whether that are like Celtic pagan beliefs, shamanic practices, Japanese Shinto. I just feel really fascinated with these ways of seeing the world. Because I think in a big way, like it feels like we've lost some of who we might have been in the past as spiritual beings, at least in the West, in our sort of mission for material gain and modern living. I really think we need to take a step back 
as a collective, if we can really hope to solve some of the big problems we're facing with the climate and all of these wars that are being fought at the moment. For artists, I feel like one of the biggest challenge challenges is is just being able to be true to oneself while still earning an income, you know? Because the world feels so expensive at the moment, particularly, and I don't think that you can really get to a point of deep mastery in your work if you have to work three jobs that eat up all your time and energy and then go to a studio At the same time, it can feel really disillusioning because the world of contemporary art is sometimes so saturated by superficial objects being sold at high price tags. It can be paralyzing, you know, to want to navigate that. But despite all that, I feel like art is still so, so vital To me, it's like the collective equivalent to the oxygen that the body needs in order to breathe and function, to sustain ourselves for further work. It's that sense of relief that gives us a little bit more time to try and improve. But the people making the art themselves just often don't receive enough support or understanding from the world about what it takes to do this very emotionally and financially demanding work. Looking back at my younger self, I think probably everything that's happened in my life was for a reason, you know, to get me where I am today. I tend to think I did the best that I could with what I had, but I definitely made a lot of mistakes. There are things that I regret. But, you know, I've tried to unlearn things to live a happier life, and that's taught me a lot. So really, maybe all I would say is just try to be more patient with yourself and maybe try to obsess less about the future because as you grow and change the way you see the world will change and it's kind of a waste of energy to try and plan things out so far down the road when you can't really predict how different you'll become in terms of materials i use a lot of organic materials at the moment things i find out and about like branches, stones, wood, but I also take videos and use traditional things like oil paint. But I probably spend most of my time on input, you know, practicing meditation and studying languages. I like to experiment with visualizations and spiritual techniques that I read about, I learn. Some of them are meant to induce altered states of consciousness. I find these things help me cultivate understanding and perspective, and I tend to rely on the visuals that come to me in those moments that, you know, they help me guide the sequence of works that I'm creating. That might be kind of unconventional, maybe, you know, but I think we've been doing this sort of thing for thousands of years. When I'm working with my hands, if I'm doing something like this out on the earth, like in nature, I try my best to tune into the environment, even though I do get distracted, to hear what I think it could be saying, what it might think uh, 
that kind of means like trying to move slowly, try to be quiet and act with intention, try to sense and feel rather than think. I find that really grounding because I'm often kind of anxious and just listening to the birds and my own breath and what that brings to me mentally, I think helps me a lot. But if I'm working in the studio, I might turn on some ambient music or something. Ultimately, when I'm putting my self out there when I'm engaging artistically with the world I hate to try and control anyone else's experience with the work so I'm never really that concerned with anybody having to get the right takeaway or understand the exact symbolic symbolic meanings of it you know but I guess I I would be pretty pleased if somebody has some kind of physical or emotional response. They're shifted in some way. I just want to create space for that to take place. But whatever comes up for someone, I think, is the truth. You know, and the truth is multifaceted. And so I want to hear that. I don't want to try and control someone's experience. You know, I like to think that what I do encourages people to see the divinity, maybe, in the space around us. To encourage them to try and slow down, maybe themselves as an experiment, and maybe that would help us respect each other more. But I don't feel it's my place to really force any kind of change. I don't think that's how change takes place. But, you know, of course... In my heart of hearts, I do hope for that change. <laughs>